Good morning. Good morning. I would like to welcome everyone to worship, all of you who are worshiping here with us today, and those of you watching online. Welcome, I'm Pastor Maggie, and I'm so grateful to be with you all. An announcement before we begin. It is with deep sorrow and hope in the resurrection that I share the passing of our brother, Cliff Knapp. His funeral will be at a later date. When I have more information to share, I will let you know. We will hold Cliff in prayer later in this service. I now invite you all to settle in, to notice your breath, and to center yourself with our Creator and with one another by hearing these words from Psalm 67. May the light of God's face shine upon you. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. God declares, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. Confident in our deliverance, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings. We have sought justice for ourselves, but neglected justice for others. We have insisted on our rights and have not lived rightly in our relationships. We have desired mercy for our sins we have not offered mercy to those who have sinned against us. Forgive us. Help us to love as you have loved us. Amen. God is our refuge and will not abandon us. In Jesus Christ, all your sins are forgiven. Amen. Let us sing our gathering hymn, My Faith Looks Up to Thee, number 759.
Let's pray. Almighty God, your compassion embraces everyone, gathering the outcast and the lost. Help us to heal wounds of fear and distrust, that we may embody your merciful love and rejoice in your astounding grace. In Jesus Christ, amen. Please be seated. Good morning. morning. This morning we'll start with a reading from Isaiah 56, 1, 6 through 8. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read Psalm 67 responsibly. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations on earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth its increase. God, our own God, has blessed us. May God give us blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. The second reading is from Romans 11, 1, 2, and 29 through 32. Paul writes, I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience. So they are... So they have now been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able to welcome the gospel. Alleluia, Lord and Savior, open now your saving word. Let it burn like fire within us, speak until our hearts are stirred. Alleluia, Lord, we sing for the good news that you bring. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, 
Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated and children can come forward. Good morning. Good morning. How are you all doing today? Good. So today we have a very strange story. We hear Jesus say some not nice things to somebody. Have any of you said something that wasn't nice to someone before? I know I have. But in our gospel today, we learn from Jesus that maybe it's not what you say at first, but what you say or do after. So what can you say or do after you say something that's not so nice? Say you're sorry. Say you're sorry. Yes, that sorry goes a long way. What else can you do? Can you show them that you're sorry? Yeah. Don't say it again. Yeah, so you can be kind to them and you can say you're sorry, Koi. Take them for a ride, do something nice for them. Yeah, if somebody, if you know what somebody likes to do, maybe you could do something nice for them. And that's exactly what Jesus does. So he says something maybe that's not the nicest, and then he helps the person by giving them something that they need or something that they like, which shows us that with God, when we are with God, we can transform our hearts, and we can be kind and show other people God's love. So Jesus shows us that it's okay to be human, right? But it's what we do afterwards, how we live, we can live into God's love. Should we pray and give thanks to God? Okay, let us pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for forgiving us. Help us to love others and show your love to the world. In Jesus we pray. Amen. All right, you can all head back to your seats. Let us pray. God, our creator, true source of wisdom, whom all life flows, plant your word in our hearts today. May your truth take root, and may your grace blossom in this place, cracking open the seed of love, where tendrils of hope bloom and grow. Amen. Last Sunday, during coffee hour, I was asked about our disturbing Old Testament reading. In particular, the part where God tells Elijah that certain people will be killed. Of course, this is not the only disturbing reading in the Old Testament. There is the well-known story of Noah and the flood, the fire that God sent to Sodom and Gomorrah, the death of many firstborn children in Egypt, and so on and so forth. But these unsettling texts are not just reserved for the Old Testament. For example, our gospel today is a hard one to wrap your head around. Here we find Jesus ignoring a woman after she called out to him. And when he finally does speak to her, he does so by refusing to help her and compares her to a dog eating crumbs off the floor. Why? Because she is a Canaanite woman, someone who in Jesus' time was looked at as a foreigner and an outcast. And yet these words come from Jesus, the exact person we would not expect such harsh words to come from. Not only because this portrays Jesus in a negative light, 
but it also makes us wonder. If Jesus can treat an outsider like this, what are we capable of? As this passage highlights the humanity of Jesus and that his ministry took place in our world, where Jesus was subject to all things that we experience, hunger, heartache, the complexities of life, politics, and society. And in this passage, we definitely experience the impact of society. As Jesus demonstrates how our negative views of outsiders can impact the way that we treat them, which today only seems to become more and more complicated, as the term outsider can mean a plethora of things, and it always seems to be evolving. An outsider can mean someone with different religion or someone who is non-religious, someone with different sexual orientations or identifications, someone with different political views, employment status, citizenship, etc. These are heated areas of debate and hate and have caused deep divisions in our country. And if we do not talk about them or address them, then we are just like Jesus and his disciples when they ignored the Canaanite woman. Which is perhaps why we have this passage. As Jesus shows us, we are not supposed to ignore people. Even if you say something that might be harsh. Because if you take time to listen, your eyes might just open and you might just be transformed. Transformed by tearing down barriers, boundaries, and biases. Transformed by allowing you to find ways to love all your neighbors. Because it is only through God's love that this transformation is possible. As Jesus showed us today. Which might be why Jesus acted the way that he did to show us that he really does get it. Jesus knows how hard it can be to go against society by helping those who are desperately in need, while also showing us that if we stick with them and with God, we can start to heal the deep wounds that have been caused. Because with God, transformation is always possible as transformation is part of God's very being. And we see this throughout scripture. God being transformed for the goodness of God's creation. For example, after God flooded the world, God said it would never happen again. And if God can recognize that God was wrong, then we can recognize when we are wrong. And maybe that's why we have all of those disturbing stories from the Old Testament. Because so many of those stories place nation against nation, people against people, showing us through scripture that this is dangerous. Because when we do, relationships break down as it is impossible to be in relationship with those who we deem outsiders. And yet, God is somehow transformed and transforming in the midst of it all, because God's grace always breaks through. Even when something is wrong or mistakes are made, God is there to forgive us and create a new heart in us. Because God understands the complexities of humanity in ways that we will never come close to understanding. And no matter how bad things get, no matter all the mistakes we make, we are always and forever loved by God. And through that love, we can grow. And so we are called to share that love through loving our neighbor, loving God, and loving 
ourselves. Even if that means starting off fresh every single day. Because every day is filled with God's grace, goodness, and forgiveness. Every day there are opportunities for growth and for transformation. Every day we are called to show up for ourselves and for others in ways that stretch our love, in ways that invite reflection, healing, and grace. Because if God can be transformed, just think what God can do in you. Amen. I invite you to sing our hymn of the day, All Are Welcome, number 641.
please stand as you are able as we profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all creation. Responding to God of grace with Hear Our Prayer. Creator God, we give thanks for the summer crops and ask for bountiful harvests. May all your creation be fed in ways that nurture vitality and growth. May we steward the land with goodness and love. God of grace, Loving God, we thank you for the gift of this new day. Awaken us to your abiding presence. Open our eyes to your creation. Open our ears to your promises. Open our hearts to the needs of others. Fill us with your spirit and guide us this day in works of kindness, justice, and mercy. God of grace, Mothering God, may we always be open to your transformative presence. Inspire us to deeply listen to others and to love our neighbors. May we become forces that break down boundaries of injustice by spreading your grace and love. God of grace. Eternal God, we lift up Randy, Debbie, their family, and all who are mourning the loss of Cliff. Provide them space to grieve, embracing them in your loving comfort and peace. May all find peace knowing that Cliff is with you and that you are holding him in your loving embrace, for nothing can separate us from your love. God of grace, healing God, you comfort those who are hurting. Accompany those who are alone, heal those who are sick, provide for all who hunger or thirst, console the bereaved, bring joy to the sorrowful, and attend to all who will call on you. Today we especially pray for Annie Ormont, Mary Anderson, Skyler, Jim Klinger, Peggy Orvez, Carol and Don Procknow, Thea Heil, and Carol Fitzke. May your healing spirit be present in them and may they find your peace. God of grace. Amen. Nurturing God, we pray for all members of St. John and all who pass through our doors. May you meet each one of us in ways that are life-giving and filled with your peace. Today, we specifically pray for this week's prayer ministry. Shelley Kufal, Kay Knapp, Nick Malley, Jan Miller, Linda Gravine, Guy Frostman, Agnes Shelbert, Rachel Ormont, Zyla Hovey, and Randy Kopp. May each of them experience your loving presence today and all days. God of grace, into your hands, O oh God, we commend for all whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you all to share the peace however you feel comfortable.
Let us give as God has so abundantly given to us as we continue with our offering. Please stand as you are able while we sing, Let the Vineyards Be Fruitful. Let us pray. Gracious God, receive these and all of our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your mission. May all creation be joined together as one in your love. In Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray how Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Anyone who is unable to come forward, I will bring communion to you in your pew. There are gluten-free wafers available upon request. Otherwise, we will do communion continuously where you'll receive the bread from me and go to your corresponding sides for the wine or the juice. All people are called to Christ's table to come and eat what is given for you. I invite the communion assistants forward.
us pray. Generous God, we thank you for the refreshments we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Some announcements before we end. Pat Plunkett's funeral will be on Monday, August 28th. So not tomorrow, but the following Monday. Visitation will be from 9 to 11, with the service at 11 taking place here at St. John. Sunday, September 10th, we have a big Sunday coming up. There is a long list of announcements under this heading in your bulletin. It is Rally Sunday, Blessing of the Backpacks, a Potluck, a Parking Lot Meeting, and a Main Elementary School Drive. For the school drive, please do see your bulletin for the list of items that are needed. They are very specific. If you are able to help and show up for the potluck, we also have a, a sign-up sheet for you in the narthex. And um, for the blessing of the backpacks, anyone is welcome to bring a backpack to be blessed for the start of the school year. And there is still information for the 2024 youth gathering coming up next year. So if you are interested, please let me know. And Pastor Maggie's Book Club will meet tomorrow night, Monday the 21st at 6.30. Are there any other announcements? Then please stand as you are able to receive the blessing. May the beauty of God be reflected in your eyes. May the love of Christ be reflected in your hands. May the wisdom of the Spirit be reflected in your words. And may the knowledge of the triune God flow from your heart. Amen. I invite you to sing our sending song, O Living Bread from Heaven, number 542.
Go in peace, share the harvest. Thanks be to God.